Okay, y'all, happy Wednesday. Um, so great to be with you. I really love this call and love this group and look forward to us getting together every week. Today, we're gonna talk about a topic that obviously we're super excited about and is absolutely necessary for you to move your business forward and hit the goals that you have. We're gonna be talking about recruiting and posting about coaching and all those kind of things. But before we jump into that, does anybody want to share like how their week has been going? Anything that's working really well, anything that's struggling, that you're struggling with? Let's take a minute to just connect. And um, I know there's a number of you that are at work and you're also listening to this. And I think it's awesome. So we appreciate, we understand that I was working full-time outside the home when I started this job. And so we just make it work. And that's what I love about it. So anybody want to unmute and jump in and just kind of connect and then we'll get to it. Wow. So you guys are just killing it and everything is easy and working so great. I love it. McKenna, is that you? Oh no, you're already muting. Okay. Okay. So nobody wants to share. I'll share real quick. Um, I've noticed that it's still just been really quiet. Like even when I've sent invites and things like that, um, people just aren't responding. So I thought that's interesting that this far into January, people are still very quiet. Yeah, I, I, a couple of things. One is, that's a really great observation. I think it's, um, I think this has been a really weird start to 2022, to be honest with you, um, as we are dealing with just kind of everything that's going on um, at this. So, so I totally hear that and understand that at the same time, I know you're not going to, but just keep showing up. Maybe kind of make a list of the, re why do you think people aren't responding? I think a lot of it has to do with people being sick. There's so many people I know that are sick. And so they're, they're just focused on keeping their head above, above water and keeping their family healthy that that's taking up most of their time. Their health and fitness isn't really their main priority right now. Absolutely. I, I, I can't tell you how many people I know that are sick or have been sick between Christmas and now. So one of the things I would encourage you to do when there's something like this and you feel really strongly about the fact that mm, it's probably because there's this massive sickness wave that's running through our country and maybe in your area, make a list of all the things that you are finding. Um, how will I say this? So let me just say this. I will say it like this, whether it's COVID or whatever it is, one of the things I love about this job is the fact that even when we're sick, we don't have to take time off. We can still lay in bed if we feel up to it and we can still feel a part of a community. COVID makes us feel isolated. Sickness makes us feel isolated. We can still be part of a community. We can still make money. We don't have to worry about not having an income. And so you just kind of make a little short list of why you think people aren't showing up or responding and then speak to that in your post. Let that be ideas that will give you, um, you know, just, just let those be ideas for posts. One of the things that I've learned over the years is that whatever I am thinking about is happening in my business or whatever I'm afraid of or whatever I get self-conscious about, I'm typically not alone. So those are always great posts or great, great post ideas. And sometimes we are so concerned with hitting our beach body post that we struggle with what to come up with. So I keep a notebook. I also keep a, a, a note page on my phone of post ideas. So when I sit down to plan out my posts, I'm like, okay, what are some of the things that are going on that I can speak to right now that will connect with somebody? So if somebody is sick laying in bed, and they've been sick for two weeks and they're not responding to you, but they're thinking about, I feel one, I feel so lousy. I can't keep any food down. You're talking about Shakeology and how even when you're sick, you can get your nutrients. You're talking about, um, I mean, I was sick a few weeks ago 
Um, and I was so thankful that my income didn't change. I didn't have to ask for time off. I laid in bed and checked in in the morning and then I checked in at night and I slept the rest of the time or just chilled out, right? So talking about real life stuff like that and how grateful you are and then always having, not always, I should say, um, but then sharing with people how you can help them because if they do have a job that they get paid for by the hour and they don't get sick time, they're laying in bed, stressed out because they're sick, stressed out because maybe their kids are sick and stressed out because they're not making an income. And you post about that and they're like, okay, I might not be able to do my workout right now because I feel like crap and I'm legit sick. But my gosh, if I didn't have to worry about my finances, I have got to take a look at this, especially with the fact that the CDC keeps coming out with, well, now there's going to be another strain and then there's going to be another and then there's going to be another and oh, there's one in Europe and there's this and that. And I don't want to get into that. You all can have your own opinions. I better watch it. You can probably see what mine are. But um, you want to be speaking to that because we, I don't believe this is going to go away anytime soon, no matter how much we want to. And I live in an area where we don't wear masks or anything like that. But I still think it's, I mean, there's like a rash of just sickness everywhere around the country. So I don't think it's going away anytime soon. So any way that we can speak about it without being divisive is really powerful because it's stressful, 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 stressful. So this is great to launch into what we're talking about. Um, how many of you, show of hands, how many of, or comment, put right in the comment box, how many of you know you have to post and invite about coaching, but you struggle with it? Thank you for being honest. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So everybody, I would be, I, I would be lying if I said that I didn't. OK, but here's how it gets better over time. And that's what we want to talk about today. Why is it important to invite I, you? You all have been on a, a, a number of calls. You're in phase two of your coaching. You know that if you don't invite to coaching, if you do not post about coaching, your team will not grow. Your income will not grow and you will not be able to reach those goals that you have if your income doesn't grow and if your team doesn't grow. So it's this domino effect and yet it's the thing that we struggle with the most and yet it's the thing that will allow us to be set free in our business. So I want to take some time today and simplify the process, but also kind of take out some of the fear issues about it and really make it so that it's fun to talk about and to get you excited. So throughout the week, we've talked a lot about having your pillars to post about. One of the things you absolutely, without a doubt, have to be having a post about every week is coaching. I would say for me personally, because of my niche and my demographic, it's one post a week of directly talking about coaching and other posts of how coaching has allowed me to do what I want to do or pay for my kid, whatever, just different things. But like you'll see if you go to my, let me pull it up really quick. And we're going to talk about this post more because it's one of the ones that I've gotten the most feedback on for coaching. So this is the post I'm going to kind of use as a reference so you guys can, can go to my page and, and, and check it out later. But as you plan out your post, which we keep, we're going to hammer that into you for every week of this group. You have got to be planning your posts. It takes the stress off of you. It allows you to be accountable to what you need to do to um, move your business forward. And I want to pause for a minute because I want you to think, how many of you like to go, are you like, do you like to shop at all? Like you like to go to stores to your favorite boutiques, any of that? Okay. That I'm, one of my pillars is fashion. I love that. Okay. So I think to myself, if I, why do I love these boutiques? Well, because they always have unique stuff that I like, but number two, they're kind, their customer service is amazing. And they really give just attention to detail about different things. And they're super reasonably priced. All things that we can all relate to. I'm not going to spend thousands and thousands of, on a t-shirt for God's sake, never. 
Um, so anyways, so with that being said, the owners, I get to, for whatever reason, I often get to know the owners um, of places I go because it matters to me to build relationships, not just in Beachbody, but in life. That's a character issue for me. So I'm always trying to build relationships with people. And one of the things I notice about my favorite boutiques is they're always planning ahead. They would not stay in business if they didn't have a plan for getting their clothes in, for looking ahead at what's coming in the future, what's coming in the next season. Yes, what's on trend. Yes, what are people wanting? What are they hearing that people like? But what is coming in the future? Do not start putting out parkas in March. No one's going to buy them. And if you don't plan ahead and order your spring stuff and your summer stuff, no one's coming to your, your boutique. They'll come one time and that's it. So you have to shift your mind to thinking that your Instagram and your Facebook, but especially your Instagram, is your storefront. And when I began to think about my Instagram as my storefront, I thought to myself, well, no wonder why I'm not getting coaches. I'm not really talking about it. People come to my storefront. They don't know that they have this opportunity. They don't know why coaching can completely change your life. I can say in a post now and then, ah, oh, coaching has changed my life and it's given me freedom. Yay. What does that even mean? Like, what does that mean? So as we talk today, I want you to begin thinking about that. Number one, what does my storefront look like? Number two, am I planning ahead? And this is why we hammer home how important it is to get your pillars. Remember, we're not going to tell you, start planning your post. No, we're telling you the system. Get your pillars, get out a calendar, and write down what days you're going to post about each of your pillars. Okay, that's the first one. And one of those has to be coaching, really at least two, I think. And then you're talking about coaching in your stories every single day. And you need to be talking about in the, that in a variety of ways as well. But we're going to get to that. So as you plan out your post, let's break this down a little bit. And we've been talking about this in the Rising Stars too, and it's been so powerful. So I want to, and the Rising Stars, for those of you who don't know, is that once you become a diamond, then you get added into this elite leadership group um, on our team. And it's really great. And we have calls on Wednesday morning and Melanie Mitro leads them and other leaders and it's really, we love it. It's our time together, but you do have to hit diamond first, okay? So, and then you have to hold it, right, Megan? We have, you, have to, you have to be a diamond. You can't keep you know, jumping back and forth because it's really about leadership. But we've been talking a lot about a recruiting system. And it's something that we've talked about for years and months. But I'm going to, so this is an, an ongoing issue for all levels of leaders. So take that in for a moment. We are constantly, even though Megan and I and Rachel and Katie and Jess, even those of us who have been leaders for a while and who are coach and who we work with was the number one coach in the company, we're always talking about recruiting and how to refine the process. So if you're sitting there going, feeling badly about the fact that this is hard for you, stop, like get over that and say, this is an issue that we all struggle with. And we're going to change our mindset today and break it down and figure out how to make it more doable for you. So the first thing you need to do is I want you to spend time. So I'm gonna give you homework throughout the week. You don't have to do it right now, but I want you to be like, okay, one thing I have to do this week is this. Next thing I have to do is this. And we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a list of things I want you to do because I hate sitting down at my computer to do my work and I'm like this. I don't really know what to do. It's like the worst. It's like if we are going to be effective leaders, if we are going to build this business and we don't have, you know, 20, I mean, I don't have 12 hours a day to sit and do my beach body business. And I'm pretty sure nobody who joins me finds freedom in working 12 to 20 hours a day, every single day. That's not freedom. So again, we're trying to build a system that is doable, that brings joy, that doesn't suck the life out of you. Okay. So when I sit down to work my business, I want to be efficient with my time. I know Megan is this way. She's got kids. I know Katie, Rachel, Jess, everyone's got a full life. I have a whole nother practice where I work with my grief clients. I don't have time to mess around when I sit down for my beach body business. It's like, let me do my list, get my stuff done, move my business forward, love what I do, change lives and continue on with the other areas of my life. 
So these are the things, again, like I said, I want you to keep a to-do list of things you're going to do this week when you sit down for your business. Obviously your business activity tracker, but also you're planning for recruiting. So first thing we want you to do is make a list of the people that you want. Like the, what, what attributes do you want in somebody to be on your team? And when you start to do this, again, all of this helps you plan out your posts so you don't just throw up a post every week that's like, coaching has changed my life and I would love to help you. So that's great, but doesn't really connect with people. Why? Like, that's cool. She can help me, but eh. so make a list of who you want to track. So I'm just going to share quickly my, like some of mine. I want, I want to attract someone uh, that has a servant's heart, that's hardworking, that's independent, that's driven, that's coachable, that's a team player, that loves Jesus, that loves to have fun. I haven't put in there, loves cocktails. And you can be on a team if you don't like cocktails. I have lots of girls who don't like cocktails. But sitting around, sometimes we do planning and we grab a cocktail or a mocktail. And there's zero judgment there. That's the point I'm trying to make. I don't want judgy, judgy people. That's not for me. I want people who are willing to take a risk. I want people who are committed to their family. Like these are the women I love to be around. Okay, so I went for more heart characteristics. That doesn't have to be you, but that to me, I'm almost 50 y'all and I know for me, the women I wanna be around is not for me about superficial stuff. Don't get me wrong. I like to play music. I like to have fun. I wanna have a, just, I like to laugh a lot. But when I'm talking about the women I want on my team, I want characteristics that match mine. So make a list of that. Then this is one of the most powerful things for me that I did. That my coach Melanie had helped me with years ago, but then we refined it a little bit ago. Is I want you to make a list of your goals in coaching. And then what your dreams look like for you, like specifically. So let me give you an example. My goals were to pay for my kids' college. Y'all know I became a widow at 35 years old and we were, not, I mean, we had been putting away for college, but our kids were in elementary school. That meant that I was now responsible completely for putting my kids through college. That was a huge burden and responsibility. I have one kid that's out of college. My twins are 20 and they're juniors in college. This is still a big deal to me. I'm, my, my goal was to help them get through college without debt because I know what it's like to be a single mom and to have a lot of financial responsibility. So that was a goal of mine. Um, a goal of mine was to be present. Again, as a widow and single mom, my kids were totally involved in sports and activities. And when I was working full-time after my husband passed away, I had grandparents and people helping out and that was awesome. But it wasn't me. It was, that was really important to me. So that was one of those things. Um, and then I started really taking a look, like what else is really important to me? So those were like my major goals. Like I gotta be realistic about why I need more money. But then when I thought about my dream for my life, because I had to work so hard when my husband passed away and always have, I've always had to work hard. That's how my brothers and I were raised. Um, also, because I knew how quickly life could change in a second. And feel free to email or text me or whatever. If you want more of my story, I won't tell that now. But literally, we were humming along as a family, getting ready to go away for 4th of July weekend when our kids were little. My husband woke up in the middle of the night with a stomach ache, and our life was never the same. Rushed him to the, to the, we went to the hospital in the middle of the night. Next day, diagnosed with stage four metastatic colon cancer all over his body. And we were in the hospital forever. And my world changed. I am very aware how quickly life can change. And so for me, being present for my family and living this life and the time that I have doing the things that set my soul on fire became my absolute passion because I don't know when the end is and none of us do. And I'm not saying that to be morbid. I'm just saying that's real life. And so I wanted like, what would my dream day look like? I wanted to live by the water. I wanted to wake up to slow mornings 
where I sit on my front porch, I drink my coffee, I do my quiet time and my prayer time, and I don't rush and hustle through every single day. Can any of you relate to like, you have one hour and 30 minutes without kids and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go to Target, I'm gonna go to the grocery store, I'm gonna do that, I gotta stop by the cleaner. And like, you have like this like this free time without your kids and the whole time you're like this, yay, this is so great and I have fun, but you're like working at max speed to get everything done. Like that, I, I was a mama, like I said, my kids were super close together. And so they were always doing sports. And I always had like this much time to get everything done. And I like cram it in. And that's just a season and that's okay. But when I dreamt about my life, I'm like, I want slow mornings where I'm not rushed. Okay. So I want you to this week to make that list. Like, what does my dream life look like? Okay. And then the other thing was I wanted to enjoy every moment of every day and enjoy my work, enjoy the process. And this is something that has dramatically changed for me and my business. I'm not going to lie. There was a season recently for the last number of years where I'm like, challenge group, check in, <laughs> got to do my post. I love my girlfriends. I just wish I could talk to them. I got to read this personal development. It's like everything was a little bit of a drag. And I, I, don't, I don't know why it was just a season and I could probably, I need to, you know, I've spent time obviously journaling about why, but I won't go into that now. And I feel like I had to own the fact that I lost the joy in the process. And so I want you to think today as you're building, I'm rebuilding this year too, that I am finding joy in the process of finding new coaches. I'm finding joy in the process of planning my, my posts. I'm finding joy in the process. And as I begin to talk about the joy in the process, that it doesn't happen right away, that there is joy in the process. Again, I'm attracting people who are like, oh, I'm ready to work. And I understand it's not going to take happen right away, but we can have fun and find joy in the process. Because everything changes when your mindset changes. Okay, so now you have these lists and you sit down to write your posts and you are, my goals list is where I began to write my posts from. And if you look at this post that I did, you know, oh yeah, not now, but this is a post that I did. You can see me sitting on my front porch. And I began to, I talk about coaching differently in this post because my point of, uh, my point of posting about coaching is not to say coaching is so great and now I can help you. But the point is to connect with people on a level that says this was a dream of mine. And now I'm doing it because of this, this, and this. And I want to help you by providing this, this, and this. So I'm talking about in this post why this was so important to me, how leisurely morning on the front porch was so important to my soul, and that your dream might not be the same, but I have a system to help you. I have a training system that will help you. And, I, and so we can't just talk about how coaching helps you helps people, we have to talk specifically about what we offer. I have a four-week training program that will help you with social media, that will walk you through the steps of how to create a sex successful business. We will walk arm in arm. We will have weekly calls. And I speak directly to that, but the, the beginning part of it is connecting at the heart level. I have had more people reach out to me, more people comment on it, on Facebook than I ever have on a coaching post. And I've had so many people message me on both Instagram and Facebook about this because that's what they could connect to. My next, coach, my next post about coaching I have scheduled and I'm finishing writing up, but my next one is gonna be about purpose once your children leave the home. Like I'm an empty nester now. So I know that women my age are like, oh, whoa, who am I? Helen, you're shaking your head. Like, who am I? And nobody wants to talk about that because this is like party season for adults. And it's totally true. But women are longing for purpose and going to their corporate job. That's cool. They like it, but they're not finding purpose. 
And when your kids are grown and you're like, Ooh, I'm 50 and think, you know, you're just, it's like different. You're like, I'm on purpose to my life, not just income. And so speaking to different things that connect with people's heart and then inviting them to be a part of it. And then being very clear, I am mentoring five women starting January 31st to help build their, make their dreams come true as well. So you want to be connected at the heart and then be very, very specific about what you're offering and then inviting them to a specific date and everything. So you also, so another list you need to make is what does your training have? Now, maybe you're at the stage where you're partnering with your coach to do a coach training, right? You're like, I'm new to this. I'm an Emerald coach and I'm trying to build my team. And so I know I'm pretty confident, at least on my team, I will take my coaches. Eventually they have to run their own coach uh, training, but I give them the tools for that. But in the beginning, I want them to bring their women in and have them be successful. So if you're struggling, like, well, I want to invite people and I want to grow my business, but like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. You've got to talk with your coach and, and talk about what your process is. Most of these women, they want you to join them in their coach training, but you need to sit down and make a list of what does your training offer. Mine list is like, I'm there's it's self-paced. I'll help you navigate social media. We teach and not sell. Um, what else? I have this whole list of stuff. I won't go on. I won't go on that. But we go through the back office. You have a whole system for taxes. I mean, it's just every little thing that we offer. And that way I can talk to people about it. Okay. So you want to be clear. So all these lists, the reason why you write your list is so that when you sit down to write these posts, you're using your time wisely and you just draw from that. And as soon as I see something that I wrote, like, again, um, purpose in life after kids leave for college, I'm all, yeah. And my heart goes, ooh, and then I can totally speak from the heart, right? Because it's an issue that's important to me. To my friends who have kids in elementary school, doesn't connect. Like that's not gonna get your heart all set on fire, so don't put that on your list. You gotta make your list for what your goals are and then you speak to that and attach coaching to that. The other thing is, and we talked about this this morning on our Rising Stars call, but it's super important and is hammered in every day. You have to have a landing point for people to go to once they're like, oh, maybe I do want to do this. So a lot of times we say things like, and I've made this mistake too. Um, you know, I'm starting my new coach training on January 31st. DM me for more info. Well, that's cool. But, um, oh, thank you guys. Your comments are so sweet. Um, uh, that's great to have people DM you, but you first want to send them to a form and get their information so you have their email. Because here's what's happened. Not everybody that reaches out to you decides to start coaching right away. You start a conversation, you know this, but you want to get their email. You want to get them on your email list because you own that list privately. If you have not done any research into Facebook and Instagram, and how you don't own anything on this, you'll want to. You'll want to. Watched another documentary this weekend called, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm having a blank. It's called The Creepy Line. You'll want to watch it. We own nothing. They completely own us on here. We own nothing. You've got to get your own data. You've heard that before. You've got to get your customers. You've got to get your potential clients. And you've got to get their emails so that you can communicate with them. Even in email, if you're using Gmail, they watch everything you do. So that's fun and cool. Even in Google Docs. So um, if you want a documentary, watch that. Um, social dilemma, watch that, all that good stuff. Um, but just own your uh, own your clients and their their contact information so that if this ever goes away or you can't have access to it, that you can still talk to your clients. But you want to have a landing page where people can go. Now, in light of what I just said, most of mine are Google Docs. And it's a Google Doc, I'd like more information about coaching, name, email, and I just keep them super simple. Why? If somebody isn't willing to fill out a form with three lines, I'm pretty sure they're not going to do a self-paced independent training that's going to help them. So it's just one more way to kind of filter through. And you guys, I used to totally be to for sure the point where like, I don't even care. I just want to like sign people up and I don't even care. And like, if they don't fill it out, I can help them. 
that gets old after a while. Katie and I have spent hours talking about the fact that we have spent hours with people who don't follow through. And it's a life sucker for sure. And I am the biggest, like my whole personality, I'm an extrovert. I, I love connecting with people. I have mentored people for the last 25 years, 30 years. And this is, these kind of people are life suckers. So you want to have a landing page where people go to you, anybody now, you don't have to have 10,000 followers on Instagram to attach a link to your stories. You can do a link tree or some kind of thing in your bio. Um, and you can have people go there to fill out a form. So let me give you, and you always, the third, another thing is you always have to have something that you're inviting to. So I have my new coach training starting on the 31st. Katie um, and I are doing, we always do a um, coach information. Sometimes we do it live on Instagram. We change it up. Sometimes we do a Zoom. Sometimes we do a, I don't know, whatever. We just, we do a question and answer. We try to come up with all sorts of stuff. But we have a call um, next Wednesday on the 26th. I, because I've been with my grief clients all morning, um, but I have time after our call to put up all my stories. And in my stories, it will be a series about coaching and inviting to the coach opportunity call or webinar, whatever we decide to call it. Yes, milkshake. Awesome. That's a great idea. There's all sorts of things that you can use. Um, but you got to be inviting to something specific. So I'm inviting, I've been talking about how my new coach training starts on the 31st and then, but I'm inviting specifically to the coach opportunity call to, for people to learn more information next Wednesday, I will have a link in there. I'd like more information about the coach information call. People will fill out their form. Then I will send them the link. Okay. So be systematic in that. Again, don't overcomplicate it. So I make my Google form for my link. I mean, for my uh, coach information call, wanting more information, and I keep it the same all the time. Why? Because I don't have time to like go and make a new form every month or every two weeks when we do it. Keep things simple. Use that same form. You don't need to overcome. I have one form for my challenge groups. And if I have a special job one, for example, then I just go in and change that title. But I have one for my challenge group, one for coach information call, and one for my new coach training. Keep it simple, sister. That way you're just like, again, you we're trying to take what we have created in our mind as this super complicated process and simplifying it for you so you're not afraid of it. So this week, your homework, you're writing out the attributes you want of a coach. If somebody wants to be on your team who does not have these, the other part of that, why you make that attribute, make a list of the attribute, attributes that you want to repel, that you don't want. Because if somebody comes to you with attributes that you don't want, that has excuses out the front door, oh, sorry, I couldn't get back to you because my kid, whatever, or whatever. You get to do that, but if they're entitled, if there's, I made a list of things I don't want. If they come to you, I had a woman who was insistent on wanting to join me in coaching, but every time we scheduled to talk, she had a reason why. Oh, my husband knew me. Good. But finally, I'm like, it sounds like you're not ready. And I just was like, I don't want to work with you. I don't want to work. And that's what I'm saying. In the past, I'll be totally honest. I'm like, come, I want my SC points. I want to try to build a team, right? But it's a life sucker. I'm not doing it. And those aren't my people. You guys are all strong, independent women who are working your tails off. You deserve to have people like that. So make those two lists this week. Make a list of your goals, you guys. I want you to carve out time in your calendar where you say goal time. And I don't mean like a goal board, which is awesome. I mean, you're just gonna sit down, grab your favorite cup of coffee, make it fun. Grab your favorite cocktail, grab your favorite mocktail. And sit down and think, what do I want my days to look like if I was hitting my goal and my dreams were coming true? What would that look like? What would that feel like? That is your list. And you are going to draw from that every time you make a coaching post. Because what is coaching doing for you? It's giving you the life you've always longed for, but you can't keep saying those words all the time or people will tune you out. You've got to figure out the one that connects with other people. And when you make your list, 
You can draw on the different things. Sitting on my front porch, having purpose when as an empty nester. Being able to pay those tuition bills that I just had to pay for college. My son just called me. I'm gonna do a post about this. I just wrote it down. My son just called me. He's like, mom, he lives off campus with his fraternity brothers in a house. And he is like, mom, I'm working. I'm, I'm working really hard. Mm, I know you are, but you mean working really hard? No, I'm just kidding. But he, um, he called and he goes, mom, I'm working really hard, but I'm just having a hard time. Like always getting to the grocery store, always cooking for myself. Can I please do that meal plan on campus? My friends and I go and then whatever. And I'm like, it's like a thousand bucks. I'm all okay. Because you're working hard. Remember our, and we have agreements like He's working, he's got to keep his grades, he's whatever. So we, so this isn't like a free ride, but he was honest about the fact, I can't, I'm, he's not a good cook. He's like having cereal all the time. He's like over six feet tall, like, yeah, dude, you got to eat, right? So I'm thinking to myself, because of the coaching, I just had to pay a huge tuition bill. And if you have kids in college, you know, like books are ridiculous. And then I work, we work with our kids to send them you know, money for groceries, as long as they're working and things like that. So now I'm going to re, you know, switch that to his meal plan and send him last blah, blah, blah. But all that to say, I can do that. And that's a really big deal to me. He lives out of state. That's a really big deal to me. And I couldn't do that because if I didn't without this. So it's things like this that matter. Like I wanted to be able to do that. My daughter, uh, my oldest daughter graduated from college, got a job, lives in Houston, and she couldn't come home for Thanksgiving. She could come home for one day. She flew in midnight Christmas Eve and had to fly out like Sunday morning after Christmas. Thanksgiving, she couldn't even come home. Our family decided, my two biological kids, my bonus daughter and my husband and I, everybody said, we need to be together for Thanksgiving. We decided to all go to Houston to be with her because she got literally Thanksgiving day off. That's it. We flew one of my, my bonus daughter from, from California. My husband and I flew from Charleston and my other two came down from whatever, from Waco, Texas, where they are in Dallas and stayed in hotels. And we had an amazing time together on the spur of the moment because she thought she could get off and she couldn't. And you guys, those are the things we need to be talking about because that's real life. That is why coaching has changed my life because when we're super excited, my daughter got a job, but she couldn't get any time off, we wanted to be together. And when I talk about that, and when I talked about that, that is when my engagement was the highest. That is when people were like, those are the things I want to do. Don't always assume that people just want more stuff because my people are not about getting more stuff. They're about being able to have the freedom to do the things that matter the most in life to them and be with the people that matter the most. And when you sit down and you write out your goals and you're like, yes, the extra money and the stuff is nice and the vacations are really nice and they're awesome, which they are. I love the vacations we get to go on. But when I talk, sit down and I write my goals of what I want my daily life to look like, the freedom I want to be able to have to support my kids, to hop on a plane and fly my kids, to be with one another because they want to be together for a holiday. When we start talking about like stuff like that, that's the stuff that people want. And absolutely throw in posts about the trips, the fun, the retreats, because that's important too. But what I've learned over time is that trips and rewards do not motivate people to start a business and stick with it. They're fun, they're amazing, they're totally worth it and they get people excited, but they don't keep people committed for the long haul to building the life they long for. And so this is where I got excited. When I made this list and when I can speak about the things that set my heart on fire and that I know other people long for, then I'm connecting with them and then writing about, then posting about coaching is not scary, Posting about coaching doesn't feel like selling. Posting, posting about coaching gets me excited and getting women to sign up so that they can have those opportunities too is like so exciting to me. And everything about posting about coaching has shifted. So simple things that you can do that can change the entire way you look about, you feel about coaching, you address coaching, the way you post about coaching, all of that. And that is what is so powerful 
about what we get to do, what this opportunity offers, and how do we not share it if we know that it dramatically in the places that matter the very most in the deepest parts of people's soul actually changes their life. So questions, what do I need to clarify? What, what can I help you with? So you guys got, yes, go ahead, Helen. Okay, so I am doing my planning and it's working really good. Um, I had to start from zero because they deleted all my stuff. So I'm kind of like a brand new coach, okay? But like you said before, I have my email list, thank God. But I uh, know, here's the thing. Uh, I start planning, I'm a little bit off on like, so at the beginning of the month, you start talking about uh, your challenge group and talking about different things. And then do you go on that for two weeks or do you like overlap it? How are you like going, like, let's say my, my challenge group starts in the, uh, the beginning of the month. So do you do two weeks before that or challenge group and talking about that and mm -hmm. giving value on that and then let's say your opportunity business calls or training starts in the middle of that month, then you start at the beginning of the month. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I don't so I'm going to have um, the other coaches jump into, but for me, Helen, I, I am not that rigid. Now people do it differently, but I'm a big believer. And again, for me, I, I really do like start each morning. I, I, pray for my clients. And I pray for those that I feel like God wants me to work with okay. his timing. So, so with that being said, I'm very systematic in that the beginning of the month, I am really inviting to the challenge group, to the opportunity for your own personal transformation, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm still always posting about coaching and I'm always posting about coaching in my stories. So the simple way for me to describe that would be like, I'm really posting about both all month long. And so I have somebody now, my, like my challenge group, or my accountability group closed, but I'm constantly talking about, so someone's like, I really want to join you. And I'm, I'm like, that's awesome. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to sign you up. You're going to practice. You're going to watch the to be mindset videos over the next two weeks. You're going to, we're going to start tracking some different things. And I just kind of break up the process with them. So they feel like they're still getting coaching in the beginning, but I'm not going to add you to the group until February. Okay. So that's how I deal with challengers coaching. Again, when you're inviting to coaching, the way that Katie and I made our, um, uh, new coach training is that we really spend the first week understanding what it is to be a, a customer and a client. If you don't know the client experience, then how are you going to talk about the client experience? So I think it's totally fine to sign up people as a coach in the beginning of the month and have them be a, like a client. And then they roll into your new coach training the next month, or they, if they're ambitious, then they do it alongside. It kind of depends on each person. And then I am very systematic again about being intentional about coaching um, posting about coaching, even after the challenge group is closed. But I think more so than I only post about coaching during the first two weeks that are our challenge groups in the first two weeks, then coaching the last two is really setting your dates for things right. and then just speaking to it. Because I think you're going to catch people at different times in their life. Like somebody maybe was at the beginning of the month was like, nah, uh, I don't need a challenge group. I'm great. I love my I love my bar class or whatever at the gym or whatever it is. And then their favorite instructor gets covert and inspired or whatever, who knows? And then they're like, I don't want to go back. I, I, I wait, I need that thing that Kendra was talking about. And I don't want to miss the opportunity to help somebody if they're like, well, they contacted me on the 20th and now we're not talking about it again till the first of the month. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I was like in the sense of to have like, a, you know, a mental schedule yes or to go from one point to the other but i do like every day i i talk about coaching because it's just okay. those moments that you know you were talking about and i get emotional because for me it's totally about being present with my kids it's not about you know 
yourself is just that freedom that I don't have. So it really touches my heart. And that's where I am always talking about, you know, to people, you know, to women especially around the 50s and all that stuff you want to, you, you don't, it's a different thing you understand life is different but uh and then i don't i do share like my challenge but i'm also like so my heart is so full on the i want to bring you back home so you can be yeah uh, i love it so i just needed it like a point you know what i mean like something Yes, I think the simplest way to do it is to plan out your daily, like your week, what yes. are your pillars, and then talking about coaching and accountability and challenge group, and you can, inter I think you can intermix those. I mean, you have to be, you have to definitely say my registration for my new coach training ends this day, right? And mine will end the 31st, like I'm going to add you in that day. That's it. And then the next group will have to start after, right? So you have to have those dates, but you get to decide where you feel comfortable inviting to it. I don't know, Megan, Katie, what do you, what is your thoughts? I've done it all. I've done it where I'm super rigid and I've done it where I've, and I cut off enrollment on this date and you can't get in after here. I do it rolling now. Like I, all my, especially because I'm working out every day. So I'm talking about workouts every day. So it's, I don't want to ever just be talking, talking, talking and not let people know that they can do this too. So I'm always sharing my workouts and my stories and constantly putting call to action polls up on my stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, sometimes I even mix up like my Facebook. I tend to be easier to attract more of the fitness side and Instagram, I go more business side. Um, so on, I, I just, I put it all out there all yeah. month long. And I, my new coach training is self-paced to start. So I can get you started whenever you're ready. I don't onboard a lot of people, so I can do one at a time and it doesn't matter. So I do it that way. And same with my calendars. I have an email series that they get when they start. So over, the, I mean, I welcome somebody into job one on Thursday, somebody Friday, somebody Saturday, somebody Sunday. And each day I just like welcome them into the group and like everyone welcomes them in is, you know, they all kind of chime in on that. And then um, I send them like my getting started guide for them to get started. I, I always say like, I'll start a new group um, in February, but nobody wants to wait once they've, once they've purchased. Right. So Megan, do you have an ongoing group or do you start new groups these months? So you I do, I have an ongoing group and then I change out the banner at the beginning of every month. So I used to do like Melanie's old, like you talk about your challenge group for the first two weeks of the month. And then the challenge group starts on the third Monday. And then you talk about coaching for the next two weeks. And then your new coach training starts on the first Monday. Like I followed that for a long time and it did work. But for me, I, I found that I always wanted, like it was easier for me mentally to change the theme at the beginning of the month. So if I'm going to market a February group about self-love and start it on February 18th, I feel like I just missed all of February. So right. I've switched it to where like, it's like the last week of January, I'll like open enrollment into my February group. And then the, like, so my like two week period of talking about my challenge group heavy is the last week of January, first week of February. So I kind of talk about February's group there, but I'll still talk about my February group all month long. Like it just depends on, and like I have my one ongoing and I did start job one in December. So I had the group, I did round two in January. And I had, like I said, I had like four people just in the last week by job one. So I'm like, I don't really feel like I can stop job one's group the end of January. Like I would have wanted to, that I need to keep it rolling into the next month. So I personally don't think I will do it again. I mean, I've now done it twice so I can talk about it just fine but I will keep that group rolling. So I have two going right now. That's just job one. Cause I know that if people do a second round they're more likely to get better results. If they're getting good results they're more likely to stick around become a coach, whatever it may be. And then you just pop in both groups each day. Yep. Perfect. Okay. And if I do a live video I'll kind of rotate like if it's kind of think which one it might be more relevant to and I'll go live in one and save the video and then pop the video like yeah. just from my camera roll into the other. So I'm not like actually going live in both. And then the next time I go live, I'll flop it and go live in the other one and put the video in the other. I like that. Okay. Katie, what about you? And I'm realizing our time. Wow. Sorry. Um, 
You know, I pretty much do like two solid weeks where I'm very intentional about what I have to offer clients for an accountability group. I always have the year one where it's a different theme each month. So I always have a group to plug anybody into. Um, I do make it a requirement after they've purchased um, a challenge package that they are purchasing something. It can be anything that they want um, or want to use and benefit from in order to keep getting my support um, in the group. And then I always have another group that I'm offering. So uh, my other group this month was job one. Next month is going to be um, nine week control freak. Um, and then, you know, like uh, Kendra shared, we have our uh, coach webinar. So I start talking more about coaching than I normally do last week. We'll do that more this week um, as we lead up to that call a little bit afterwards. So I kind of go heavier in one area, but I'm still talking about both. Um, and I often say like a lot of times, you know, we feel like, oh my gosh, we're talking about this like way too much, but I, you know, I often hear somebody talking about like a product that they love. And then when I need it, I'm like, who was it that was talking about that product that I love? And then I like go to find them and they don't have anything posted. And I'm like, shoot, I don't remember who that was, or I can't find it. And so I always find that like being consistent in both of those areas, it, it makes it easier for people to find us and what we have to offer them um, when we are doing that, when we are providing it, you know, putting it out there that way. Um, and the one thing I do want to say too is one thing that Kendra and I um, changed up as of this month. We had a self paced email training that we were so proud of. We worked so hard on it. And basically, like what this, these emails would do, we would send out an email, it would send them to the coach, um, you know, certain coach office tasks that they had to do and then when they completed it they would let us know or you know do the assignment whatever and then we would send them the next email and then when they updated the coach online office in the fall we were like crap now our emails can't they don't they didn't go with the training that was offered back there anymore so we we're like what are we going to do so this month just testing out something new was basically we just took an outline of what is in the coach online office so, you know, like when you first go back there, um, it's like getting started and there's three videos. So started a um, group chat on Instagram with the new coaches. And then I was like, okay, today's day one training. This is your assignment. We broke it down so that they don't spend any more than 10 minutes in the coach online office. Um, and we really went through all the videos. Um, a couple we skipped over because we were like, they don't really need those right now. But um, what is great about that is like, as soon as you're done completing those, you know, videos, let me know in the chat, make sure you're writing down questions. And as soon as someone like goes in the chat and they're like, okay, I just finished my training. These are my questions. Then I noticed the other coach in there is like, wait, I'm, you know, I'm almost caught up. I'm almost done with the videos, you know, and it's been like motivating them um, in the chat. And um, it's just been a really great thing. So like I said, we just started doing that this month, but that's something that's so duplicatable for any of you. You're literally just being there for them every day, guiding them where to go in the back office and holding them accountable. And it hasn't been overwhelming. It's been super simple, super easy. And um, they're having such success with it. Um, and they're already doing really great with their business as a brand new coach. So um, I just want to share that with you because I know oftentimes, like even my own coaches will say, um, well, I don't really recruit because, you know, I don't have any training to provide them. And our coach online office has incredible training. It's just super overwhelming because there's so much of it. So if we can just break that down and show them like how easy it can be and not overwhelming and not stressful, it's like, it's a game changer. I'm telling you right now. So I really want to encourage you guys to just kind of don't feel overwhelmed with, you know, all that we have to offer, look at it as a blessing and just simplify it for the people that you're onboarding. All right, um, you guys, this is awesome. I wanna be respectful of your time. I know that was a lot of information today, um, but so remember your action items, make your list attributes you do want, you don't want of a coach, make your list about your goals, your personal goals and how coaching has changed your life and what you want your daily life to look like and what it would look and feel like and then I want you to um, comment below this once Megan posted the, um, the recording, like done, did my list, 
ready to go, whatever, so that we can kind of keep on track of you. We know that many of you are at work, so you'll do that at some point over the next week. And there's people that um, will be listening to the recording, but we want to look, I'm going to be looking at my coaches in this group and make sure that you have done that because when you finally do that, it will change the way you view sharing about coaching. All right. All right. Sounds good. Have a great day.